When Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, Pompeii wasn't the only town destroyed. There was another. That's right, and you've probably never heard of this town. Why is Pompeii more popular? I don't know, but today we're gonna show you the town you should explore instead of Pompeii and tell you all the reasons why it's a better place to visit. Of course, in order to show you this very cool ruined town, we have to, I have to run so I don't get hit by car, we have to actually show up and get there. So how are we getting there? We're taking a couple buses and a couple trains and we'll show you how to ride. We've been utilizing public transportation since we got here to Italy three weeks ago, and it's really been working out great. Yep, we've taken the train on a few occasions, and it's probably been the cheapest and fastest of transportation since we've been here. And we've done the trains, we've done ferries, we've done a private driver, and taxis. the buses. Yes, and taxis. So, Really, the buses so far, it's about $1.50 a ride. The train has been between two and three bucks. Euros. <laughs> uh, I'm still doing that. And we've gone all the way from Sorrento to Naples. Naples, it's an hour and a half. Yeah, and it was like two and a half euros to ride the train one way to Naples from yeah. where we were at. So That's, really simple, yeah. easy to learn the routes. Yeah. Um, there are people everywhere who will help you if you need help figuring out where to get off or which track to get on. It's been really simple and very reliable. It has been. So when you get here, don't rent a car if you can help it because the main reason is because parking, parking here is insane. You might park 20 or 30 minutes out from the place you actually want to be. Yeah. So navigating a rental car is really difficult. Doing public transportation, especially in the bigger cities like Sorrento and Naples and Rome and all of those areas, it's really easy to do. instead of Pompeii is right here at Herculaneum. That's right, and we let Phil say that word because I keep screwing it up. Yeah, she keeps calling it Hercules, Hercules. I have no Italian in me whatsoever. <laughs> Herculaneum. So this place is gonna be way better than Pompeii and keep watching because we're gonna show you why. Let's go. So the first reason you should come here and instead of Pompeii is the fact that Pompeii is vast. It's enormous. You could spend all day just walking to the major ruins in Pompeii. Whereas a Herculaneum, you walk in and it's more compact. It's right here in front of you. I mean, literally, we walked in the door and, and there it is behind us. So everything is all close together. So when you walk through the ruins, you're not going through vast open spaces just to get to the next thing you want to see. It's all right here in one easy little area to navigate. And we're going to go down there and check it out. For those of you that don't know about Herculaneum, it was an ancient Roman city that was buried under volcanic ash and stone like Pompeii during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. Herculaneum was only five miles from the volcano along the coast of Italy. But unlike Pompeii, the volcanic material that covered Herculaneum carbonized and preserved more objects such as beds and doors and roofs and even food was completely preserved. Although smaller than Pompeii, Herculaneum was wealthier. It was a seaside retreat for the Roman elite and was said to be one of the richest cities in southern Italy. So the ruins found here are more luxurious than those in Pompeii. Archaeologists are working hard to dig out this city. It's a really difficult process because there's a modern day city named Ercolano sitting right on top of this ancient preserved city.
Look behind me, what do you think that is? Yeah, it looks like a big old outhouse or a latrine. Yeah, not so much. It's actually where you would go and stop by and get some fast food of the day. So those big circles you see that are empty, they would put big basins down in with food and you would just go up and get what you wanted out of those big basins. Very interesting. Thermopolium. Yeah, what he said. Next up, something Phil really loves. <laughs> Shade, which Herculaneum has a ton of. And it's because their walls are much taller. Most of the rooms still have ceilings or another level above them, maybe a second floor, but much more shade here. And unlike Pompeii, which has very little ruins that are actually full walled or ceilings. So you're gonna be in the sun a lot more because the ruins are so much smaller than they are here. So especially if you're here in the summertime in June and July when it is hot, 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 you're gonna to wanna to come here instead. This one was speaking to me, shade, lots of it. Sunny day when you knocked upon my door. Oh, I got a different kind of feeling, the kind I never had before. I thought this was quite the coincidence. I think it's time to smack them with a little fun fact, Phil. What you got? I have nothing. Hit me. <laughs> he totally does. We were just talking about it. Okay. To okay. refresh his memory. All right, so. 20 meters of ashes hit this place when the volcano erupted. Right, and it completely covered Herculaneum and it pushed it down four meters. That is crazy. That's a lot of weight. And a little macabre fact is they found over 300 skeletal remains throughout the city so far. That's crazy. But they have a lot more digging to do because they're only about 20% excavated. So there's a lot more city left to be found. Yeah, and as we're walking around the outskirts of the ruins, you can see where they're digging further into the sidewalls of the adjoining, I guess, properties here at Herculaneum. It is just fascinating how much of it was 100% preserved. Yeah. It, it, it's crazy how the ash from the volcano just kind of sealed it as yeah. it was and it preserved it. it like it mummy, is, like yeah. it mum mummified the whole city. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy when you walk through here. It is definitely worth a trip here to walk through and check it out. Unless you're a serious history buff, you won't listen to every single button on your, on your audio to yeah. tour, which we do recommend by the way. And let's go ahead to our next reason why you should choose this over Pompeii. And Phil has no idea what I'm gonna say here. None at all. And that is because it is much easier to tour this independently than it is Pompeii. Pompeii, the ruins are so destructed, it is much more difficult to figure out what you're looking at. Mm. We're here, the buildings are practically intact and you can walk through, it has a little audio guide, you can come and go and listen to and stop and see as much as you want. That's pretty interesting. And I mean, it's a little hard to hear with these phones because you have to hold it to your, your ear, but there's a lot of good stuff in here. And, and there's a lot of ooh and ah factors when you're standing in front of yeah. a building um, and it's telling you the history of what, what it was and, and how it was used. So if you decide to go to Pompeii instead, we do recommend uh, you get some kind of tour. It doesn't have to be an all day tour, but something where someone is explaining to you what you're looking at so you get something out of your tour. Look, Phil, another snack bar. Isn't this the weirdest thing? Come over and check it out. This is where they would put the pots of food inside here and underneath it would be, there would be a flame to keep it warm and they, people would just serve themselves out of the same pot. It's very cool, but it still looks like a bathroom to me. I'd be worried about getting my meat out of a pot that looked like a toilet. <laughs> it's amazing how much tile is preserved here. This is tiny little tile intricately put together. And then if you go into a lot of these buildings, you will see different size tile and stone. And it looks like it is in almost perfect condition considering the age. It was a sunny day when you knocked upon my Herculaneum is way less crowded than Pompeii. That is very true. Pompeii gets almost 4 million visitors a year. Here is less known and they only get about 500,000 visitors a year. So that means less shoulders, less elbows, <laughs> and less crowds. And more my style. <laughs> We're gonna go to the Garden of Idleness. 
and leisure. It sounded really cool. But it looks like everybody else beat us to it. Yes, and they're all hanging out and sitting in the chairs. So, we're not going to have much leisure. Way less walking involved here compared to Pompeii. Yeah, here in Herculaneum, the ruins are literally right next to each other. So you're walking from one to the other, and you're not missing anything in between. So you can be here for a few hours and get it all in without going for vast amounts of time with basically nothing till you get to your next ruin. Yeah, Pompeii is, is spread out, and it takes you a while to go from one ruin to the other. Herculaneum, not right on so top much. of each other. When you come through here, be sure and pay attention to the charred wood. There's petrified wood throughout all the buildings that remain from when the volcano went off. It's crazy that the wood just didn't disintegrate and catch on fire and it's crazy. It definitely stands out. I mean, it is dark black compared to the rest of the stone and sand and, and marble that's Are the inside. New yeah, yeah. All right, so we have been traipsing around ancient ruins for the past few hours, and I think it's time to feed film. Yeah, pizza is calling, and since we're in the land of pizza, we're going to listen and go. Mm -hmm.